Right, so today's task is the warm-up regulator. Now you'll recognise these on all K-Jets. This is a warm-up regulator. And what it does, it has fuel from... Some of you won't get this, it's quite hard to get your head around until I do later videos on the fuel meter in ahead. There's um, those two unions, which are those two bolts. That goes a pipe from the fuel meter in head. Imagine that box is a fuel meter in head. On the control plunger inside, that has pressure on top. So the plunger sort of can be held inside the fuel meter in head via fuel pressure. That comes out into the lines and goes through this. Now, when the weather's cold, um, you want a bit extra fuel for enrichment. So what this does is when this is cold, there's a bimetallic strip inside that little bar with a green bit on. I'll come to that in a minute. That connects, it's got springs, um, there's a little like top hat with a pin on it. That pin there, and that pin sits on the center of that black circle inside there, which again I'll come to in a minute. Right, so what we've got here is the inside of the warm up regulator. Now the black circle there, little disc shape, the four screws, that's the fuel housing bit where the fuel passes through. There's a metal gauze inside there, but I'll strip it and you'll see in a minute. Um, all it does, when this is cold, that this bimetallic strip doesn't do anything and there's no pressure pushing in that little circle there, which then allows fuel to pass through those two which what that does is reduce the pressure on top of the fuel plunger in the fuel meter head which means it allows a little bit more fuel to go through on a cold start now as it warms up these are bolted to the engine so it uses the engine heat from the block um, cylinder head and an electrical current from or reading from a coolant center which i think is a big one on the side of the cylinder head that then heats this up and that then this distorts or changes shape only a touch which moves all the spring pressures and then pushes that plunger into that little hole closing off that bypass which then leaves the control pressure on top of the fuel meter and head constant and then that takes you on to the back of it now this is a widely known modification which is the WR mod or warm up relicator mod and what you do is you'll hold for that brass coupling and then it leaves you access to the allen key at the back of here and what that does allows you to manually adjust when the engine's warm so let the engine all warm normally we'll, I'll go all over this once I actually eventually get to the point of doing fuel pressures so once the engine's warm up at working temperature that's gone back to its shape and that's shut off there's no bypass the control pressure you then manually adjust that to reduce the control pressure just a touch so then it allows the fuel plunger to move up inside the fuel meter in head just a bit easier to allow a bit more fuel through so what we're going to do I've tested this resistor not resistor zoom in there we go so that says 23 ohms 3% which is 23 ohms plus or minus 3% so get a multimeter stick it on the plug on the back other side of there um, Test the leads first, so my leads had a resistance of 7, seven ohms, um, and that was reading 30 when I put it on there, so 30 takes 7 is 23. So that's pretty much bang on what it should be. Again, a genuine part, 30, 31 years later, still working. So we know that's fine. Um, you can get these sent away and get them rebuilt, but they're over 100 quid. It's, it's crazy. Um, all you want to do is test that. It's not hard. Um, so once you know that's fine, you then want to take off that in the back of there, which we'll do now, and see what's in there, because that little circle in the middle should move, and mine doesn't, so let's pull it off and see what's going on inside there. Right, so this is inside, behind that disc, and as you can see the disc over there, that's the main cover, four screws, they're very thin plates, so be careful with that, and then this little hat thing, don't lose that because it's not attached to anything. Or it is, it's attached to my screwdriver, there you go. Right, and inside here, you've got an O-ring, so that'll be changed. Again, for fuel-resistant one. Um, not that fuel goes through it, or near it, because it's sealed on this casing, but make sure it's fuel resistant, just makes sense. Now, you've got two little holes there, top one and a little one there. Now, this middle one and this out are exactly the same height. So, 
when you've got a cold start situation, there's no spring pressure pushing on this. So that disc seals up that hole. So when there's no spring pressure, any the normal fuel pressure that goes through it is enough to lift that off its recess and let fuel bypass into that hole, which then goes, removes the um, pressure from the control plunger. Now, once the car's warmed up and this strip um, moves, it then places pressure on the spring, which then pushes pressure on top of this, which seals that hole up. Um, and you can test that just by putting your finger over there and trying to blow through one of the holes at the other side. It doesn't work. So, you know, this is good. There's a metal gauze inside it, inside one of the housings. A little zoom in or not. Hold on. There you go. There's a metal gauze inside there. Um, I've just thrown the airline through it. Um, it's clean as a whistle, so I'm not worried about that. So, the cost to rebuild this is an O-ring. And what and ten pound for a multimeter if you haven't got one from screw like the screw fix to test that. So change that seal for the course of changing it. Make sure all those bits in there are clean and free to move. Make sure this is within its resistance, which is on there. And then the diaphragm at the back on the warm-up regulator. That section there. As long as that's got no massive splits in it, you ain't gonna worry. But the chance of that being split are quite slim because it doesn't actually move a lot. It only moves a fraction of nothingness. Um, so it's very slow, slim chance of getting that to split. So as long as that's fine, again, you can test that by blowing through the blowing through the ports, seeing if that moves, etc. So as long as that diaphragm's fine and your resistance on the bimatic strip is good and those gubbins are nice and clean, Clean it up, change that seal, put it back together, and that's that. And then once you come to rebuilding the fuel metering head, which will be another video soon, once you get the vehicle running, well, not actually running, once you've got the fuel pressure running, you can then adjust your pressures and make sure everything's as it should be. So what I'm going to do now is change that seal and then put it back together. Now we have the warm regulator attached back on the cylinder block with this hose in it. So all that is need to do now is once I've got the engine in the car and start doing the fuel pressures then I can just double check that, that Allen key that you need to get to is up beyond there. But it's only a case of undoing two Allen key bolts, move that away, adjust the Allen key till you get the pressure done. So let's get on with the next bit. <laughs> 